Another advantage Tesla has that legacy automakers are going to have a real hard time keeping up with in the future is longevity. So Tesla is known for providing software updates to their vehicle, but in more recent history, it's becoming more and more common to see Tesla provide hardware upgrades as well. Now, a common one you'll see a lot of people talk about is the hardware 3.0 upgrade for lots of different Teslas out there that purchase full self-driving capability, but they don't have that full self-driving chip Tesla released in April of last year. So Tesla offered to swap out those older CPUs on the older vehicles at no additional cost, again, if you purchase full self-driving so that you could have much more processing and GPU power that was able to render the surroundings of the vehicle a lot better to the capabilities and the requirements of that eventual full self-driving software. We're already seeing lots of leaks and references to stoplights and traffic lights within Autopilot's code that's making people think that support for being able to not just, you know, have the stop signs and red lights show up on the screen, which is really cool, but also stop and interact with those lights along with autopilot which takes us another step closer to that full self-driving future I know the fact that Tesla is willing to swap out those parts and also not just when it comes to full self-driving capability because Tesla has also introduced an MCU upgrade option for people who bought a model s or X before March of 2018 so this is something I found kind of interesting because in all honesty for Tesla's best interest and for them to prioritize their revenue it actually doesn't make a ton of sense for them to work on making experiences better for their older cars. You know, from a moral standpoint, yes, it would be good for people who bought Teslas all the way back from 2013 to get those MCU upgrades because those displays, they were cool at the time, but they've slowed down a lot. Tesla has learned a lot about power efficiency and what these cars are going to be requiring out of GPUs in the future, and they didn't really have a great grasp on that in the past. So anyone with an older Model S or even older Model X can testify that that MCU and that display that they interact with gets slow and it gets laggy and it becomes a very very clunky experience for a car you've paid a lot of money for and given Tesla goes all in on software and they think that experience of driving and interacting with the vehicle should be all done via touchscreen then yeah that MCU is far more important than any other car's generic infotainment system because this is how you control like everything you know it's not just the basic radio or the basic stereo but speaking of radio it did come at a cost so I should mention that the MCU 2 upgrade removes your access of AM F FM and XM radio in favor of moving you towards more internet streaming services, but that of course costs 10 bucks a month with Tesla's premium connectivity. So it may not be for everyone because a lot of people do enjoy those radio stations, but if you're buying this upgrade, which costs $2,500, so it is not included for free, then you have to say goodbye to some of those older forms of listening to music or listening to radio. But honestly, $2,500, while it may seem like a lot for a hardware upgrade, there are a ton of people that have been super super vocal about it online and said that they would gladly pay that because it's way cheaper than a new Tesla would cost. And these people love their car. They're happy with the range. They're happy with it being electric. They love charging from home. They even love some of the autopilot features. So if $2,500 means that they get a less laggy, less clunky, more fluid experience with the touch interface, which is a primary user input for drivers and Teslas, then yeah, they're more than happy to pay $2,500 to get that upgrade. Now Tesla at the beginning of March did start rolling this out but it is in an invite-only mode right now because I don't know if their factories are booked up producing the full self-driving computer or maybe they don't want to get too many requests at the same time because one issue Tesla could run into that would hurt them financially is if they just let anybody buy it, okay? And said, all right, just bring it to a service center or even mobile service will come out to you. We'll swap out the old MCU for the new one. You'll get a much smoother user interface. Everything will be running more reliably. Well, yeah, that would be great, but it would probably mean a lot of people buying 2012, 2013 Model S's for super cheap, cheaper than, you know, standard range Model 3's, and then just paying the extra $2,500, swap out the MCU, and boom, they have a very modern, very mainstream electric car that they didn't have to pay very much for, and since they're buying it from third parties, that means Tesla loses out on that revenue. So, from just a friendliness to the consumer market, and being able to get more people to switch to electric, uh, yeah, I mean, it could be good. In time, maybe they will eventually let anybody buy that option, but currently, they're going to start rolling it out with people to autopilot 2.5 with full self-driving and they said by late March, which is 
you know, coming up pretty soon, they want to start rolling it out to people with Autopilot 2.0 and full self-driving. And then after the month of March, which should be pretty quick, they'll start doing installations for everybody else, even the oldest Model S and X you can imagine. But that $2,500 gives those older Tesla drivers a ton of advantages that I think they'd be excited for. Things like a faster browser with video playback and 3D rendering support. It gives them access to 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi networks and better cellular connectivity. It can give them access to things like sentry mode so that you can record record all of the different cameras around the vehicle, plus a bunch of games added to Tesla Arcade like Cuphead and Stardew Valley. Pretty major titles that your car can't play now, but yeah, they just come swap out the MCU and boom, your car can play a bunch more games. So there's a bunch of benefits you get out of that that I think a lot of people would be willing to do. It's just maybe they're bottlenecked with production right now and they don't really see the MCU 2 upgrades as a priority because, you know, it doesn't really help them sell more products. I doubt there's much of a profit off of that $2,500 but I just want to take a step back and say how cool it is that such an upgrade is possible with vehicles like this and I know there are some hardware upgrades you can do with other automakers but none of them feel this major none of them feel like hey we designed a brand new processor and GPU that's gonna allow your car to drive itself and we're gonna just go ahead and swap that out for you as long as you bought full self-driving yeah we don't mind it's free and with the older cars it's like yeah just an extra 2500 bucks we'll swap it out it's even better this is experience tesla's going through i'm sure it's kind of bumpy and some of the installations might take a while to schedule and things like that but over time this is something tesla i think is going to get better at just like any car company when they do something for a long time they can become experts in that field and it's something other automakers are going to have a hard time catching up on because in the future who knows tesla could come up with better cpus and gpus that they realize, okay, this is what we need for even better full self-driving and to help with our fleet learning data and stuff to send it back to Tesla. And we'll just start swapping out all of those old computer chips with our new ones and provide features and benefits that their vehicles currently don't offer, but, but they can in the future. So that's really cool to me because it supports the idea that Teslas are much more just a computer on wheels than they are just vehicles. And that's something that a Silicon Valley company or, you know, a computer company, artificial intelligence company, they're much better at that than companies that have just been building, you know, ICE cars for decades. That will mean that even the oldest Teslas will be getting upgrades and support. It's crazy that within a matter of months, a car that's eight years old now will still be getting better via hardware upgrades. And I hope Tesla continues to roll out stuff like that in the future. As I'm sure, you know, eight to 10 years from now, the 2018 Model 3 might start getting kind of laggy, getting kind of slow. That's what happens with computers. But these cars also do a lot more things than traditional cars. So if you want to provide that option for the drivers to opt in to these upgrades, then yeah, provide that option. If they don't care and they just use the car for driving and that's it, they don't really care about the infotainment, then yeah, they can just uh, keep on driving it, enjoying the benefits of an EV. But what do you guys think about this? You think other automakers are going to be able to catch up with these type of giant MCU upgrades and software improvements that Tesla provides? Feel free to let me know what you're thinking down below. Thank you guys for watching and I hope you have an excellent day. Take care.